So I'd like to explain a little bit more in detail how my way of thinking and my way of forecasting works and what the practical value of it is. For instance, uh, I have 30 leading design thoughts in my latest publication. And I'll just take one just to explain how, how it works. One, for instance, is how can we design like our ancestors did? What you see now in fashion is a lot of products uh, inspired by primeval times. And then if you look at that just from a fashion perspective, oh, you want stuff to look primitive. But if you start looking at the reason behind this whole rise of you know, new primitive things, it is about a need for a different way of designing, a different way of thinking. As we all know, we have a climate crisis, we have a credit crisis, and our ancestors didn't have that. And there was actually a reason for it, because they had much fewer means than we have, but that meant they also designed in a completely different way. And we can actually learn from that. And what we can learn from that is not how to make modern things look primitive, but actually how to design in a completely different way like they used to. For instance, when our ancestors wanted to design something, um, they had very little means to, to make stuff. So they would just look around in their surroundings to find something that already closely resembled what they wanted to, to make. And then they had to just do very little to it and they would have a product. And now we do just the opposite. We start designing a product and sketching it. And, and then in the final stage, often we decide, OK, so what are we going to make this from? Which is just the opposite way to do it. And it obviously creates a lot of waste. So what I have my customers do with this principle is not trying to make something that looks primitive. But if they want to make something new, I let them look in their surroundings to see if they can find something that already closely resembles what they want to make, which does not mean that they just have to copy what they have and just re-release it. They can do stuff to it. Like one example, one of my customers wanted to develop a new outsole. And what I heard, I thought, well, that kind of looks like a safety shoe outsole. And they had a safety shoe division that they never ever bothered to look at because it was not fashion. But then they kind of took the, the time to get some of their catalogs and actually found one of these outsoles that were used for safety footwear that really closely resembled what they wanted to make and they only just needed to add like, an extra vulcanized um, rim around it which they didn't need to make a new mold for so that meant that that by doing a little hunting and gathering in their own company they came with a new product that they had very little work to do on that didn't cost them much much money and that did not require new molds or other other things so that's basically how you can look at fashion in a completely different way.